Hello and welcome everyone to our latest presentation on interpretation of CT scan of the lung. Decreased lung attenuation. In a normal CT scan, the attenuation of the lung depends on the perfusion, the air that is present and the soft tissue. So what happens is when there is a decreased attenuation, it indicates that there is more air which is getting trapped or the perfusion has reduced or there is some soft tissue loss. It is either one of these conditions which has to be present for a patient to have decreased attenuation of the lung. So types of lung attenuation patterns, there are basically four attenuation patterns which we need to know. The first is hypoperfusion and mosaic perfusion. The second is air trapping. The third is cystic lung disease. And the finally, and the most important one is the pulmonary emphysema. Coming first to hypoperfusion and mosaic perfusion. Now, this can be because of mostly two reasons. Either it can be due to the airway, where the air, small airways have been damaged, resulting in reflex vasoconstriction, or it can be vascular, where the vessels as such are having problem. So, this particular CT scan is showing decreased attenuation, especially if you can see over here, almost whole of the left lower lobe is having decreased attenuation and we have some mosaic attenuation in the right side in the both the upper and the lower lobes so these are the areas where you are having a low attenuation this is something which you need to make your eye focused on because this is not something which will come out very clearly in a ct scan so unless you look for these you're going to miss these so this is something which you will find in airway disease the second thing that you can look for in airway disease is the, you will find that the airways are having some distorted appearance. So this indicate the problem lies in the airways rather than in the vessels. It can be also because of vascular disease. Here these areas which are looking like ground glassing, these are actually the normal areas which are having a slightly higher perfusion because these areas are having decreased attenuation. The causes of airway disease causing mosaic perfusion are bronchiolitis obliterus. This is the most important and the most common cause, which again can be because of various reasons like idiopathic healed infections, inhaled toxins, connective tissue disorders and others. Apart from this, hypersensitive pneumonitis, sarcoidosis, airway disease related to Langerhans and cell histiocytosis and other diseases can also produce this type of picture. Well, the vascular causes the most common one being chronic pulmonary embolism the other less frequent ones are idiopathic pulmonary hypertension and pulmonary arterial hypertension caused by cardiac and pulmonary disease now this is something a picture which is very similar to what we saw in the last two ct scans this is simple ground glassing this is patchy ground glassing it is very difficult to differentiate between a patchy ground glassing from a decreased attenuation. In this particular CT scan, these are the areas which are having abnormality. So the way by which we can differentiate these two is in patchy ground glassing, the high density areas are abnormal while the low density areas are the normal lungs. Here the vessel size may not be reduced, it may be normal. while in the areas of increased density often ill-defined and poorly marginated while these areas are often sharply marginated because they are more due to the perfusion and the high density areas are predominantly centrilobular but in the mosaic perfusion pattern it is hardly ever centrilobular distribution and no pattern of attenuation on expiratory CT scan so the presence of areas of hyperperfusion and of mosaic perfusion may be due to either airway disease or vascular disease. Mosaic perfusion can often be differentiated from mosaic pattern resulting from patchy distributed ground glassing on the basis of the caliber of the blood vessels. When dilated and thick walled airways can be recognized in lucent lung regions, airway disease is suggested. This is something which we saw in the first CT scan which was of the airway disease 
and a combination of areas of hyperperfusion and mosaic perfusion with enlargement of the central pulmonary arteries suggest a vascular cause, something similar to a chronic pulmonary embolism with pulmonary arterial hypertension. The combination of areas of mosaic perfusion and ground glass opacity creates a pattern which is termed as head cheese pattern. This is called the head cheese pattern. This is seen in hypersensitive pneumonitis where you will see a combination of diffuse ground glassing. Here you can see the diffuse ground glassing with areas of decreased attenuation which is because of hyperperfusion. This will be accentuated in an expiratory film. Here you can see the contrast is much better in an expiratory film. The second type of decreased attenuation is air trapping. Air trapping is a sign of airway narrowing. Air trapping may be seen on expiratory scans in patients with normal inspiratory scans. When air trapping on expiratory CT scan accentuates the area of hyperperfusion seen on an inspiratory film, this hyperperfusion is very likely to be a result of airway narrowing. If this area of hyperperfusion increases in density on an expiratory scan, the cause is most probably vascular. So here what we see is multiple areas of air trapping. Here these are the areas where there is air trapping seen in patient with graft versus host disease. The next is cystic lung disease. Lung cysts are well-defined circumscribed and often rounded lesions with a thin wall composed of cellular elements that usually contain air, but they can contain other fluids as well. The most frequent cause of lung cyst is an advanced fibrosis giving an appearance which is called honeycomb cysts. Cavitary nodules are cyst-like structures that develop because of necrosis and they occur in a pre-existing nodule. Pneumatocils are thin-walled air-filled spaces occurring in association with some pulmonary infection and with post-traumatic pulmonary laceration. And finally, bronchiectasis which may give you a uh, appearance of lung cysts but this is not actually a lung cyst you have to look for some signs to differentiate it from lung cyst so looking at the cystic lesions lung cyst is mainly because of end stage pulmonary fibrosis lymphangiomatosis langerhans cell histiocytosis lymphocytic interstitial pneumonia or bronchogenic cyst Cavitary nodules can be because of Langer and cell histiocytosis, metastatic tumors, septic embolism. These are the most common causes. In India, tuberculosis is one of the common cause of cavitary nodules. The other causes are pneumatocil, which can be mostly because of staphylococcal infection and rarely because of pneumocystis gerovisi or it also can be post-traumatic. And lastly, we need to differentiate bronchiectasis from all these. So what we see over here is honeycombing in a cystic lung change which is found in advanced lung fibrosis. This is usually seen in cases of interstitial lung disease. Here you can see the honeycombing cysts. This is lymphangiomatosis with a diffuse thin walled round cystic cyst. There are a lot of cysts which are round and they have a thin wall. This is seen in lymphangiomatosis. The next thing is Langerhans cell histiocytosis. Here you can see that there are regular shaped thin or thick walled cysts, same round shaped distributed throughout the lungs. The main difference between the two is Langerhans cell histiocytosis has cysts which are ranging from various sizes, so small to large, while in the previous it is almost equal. Here you can find very thin walled cysts. You can see the cysts are very thin walled and they can affect both upper and lower lobe and there is a presence of ground glassing in and around these cysts. This is lymphocystic interstitial pneumonia. Uh, what we see over here is cavitary nodules. Here you can see these were nodules which have like this is a nodule which is present. This most of these nodules have gone cavitary changes. This is usually seen in pulmonary metastasis. 
and finally this is a pneumatocil here you can see the pneumatocil these are thin walled cysts which can be present post infection or trauma and they are usually surrounded by this kind of ground glassing or consolidation and finally this is bronchiectasis and the sign by which we can differentiate it from cysts is if you scan the ct scan you will find some of the cysts are having these signet ring appearance this is the presence of the pulmonary arteries which are accompanying and this gives the bronchus an appearance of a signet ring the presence of this indicates that this is a bronchiectasis and not cyst finally pulmonary emphysema pulmonary emphysema combines a permanent abnormal enlargement of the air spaces distal to the terminal bronchioles and the destruction of the walls of these involved air spaces emphysema has three major forms of presentation it can be small lucencies that can become confluent to form a large irregular area of very low density with clear signs of lung destruction an overall decrease in lung attenuation with reduction in vascular marking and lastly we may all find large air containing spaces with a diameter less than 1 cm which is called bulla so this what we see over here is mild centrilobular emphysema these are the areas of lungs which have been destroyed resulting in a decreased lung attenuation in this spaces you don't find anything no bronchovascular markings so these are the areas where the lungs has been destroyed giving you a emphysema this is a severe confluent centrilobular emphysema this is an advanced version of what we just saw in the previous ct scan here the, almost the entire lung has been destroyed this is this is paraseptal emphysema as you can see over here this is a single layer of subpleural lucency these are predominantly seen below the pleura and this is called paraseptal emphysema this is bullous emphysema here you can see large cavitary type of lesions this is called bullous emphysema the next method by which we can make a diagnosis is looking at the distribution of this decreased attenuation if it is present more in the upper lung then it deals with langerhans cell histiocytosis sarcoidosis silicosis if it is more on the lower side it is more towards the interstitial lung disease if it is more diffuse it is lymphangiomatosis or hematogenous metastasis comparing central lung to the peripheral lung if it is more central then it is mostly because of silicosis or coal workers pneumoconiosis if it is more peripheral again it is more towards the interstitial lung disease if it is posterior to anterior if it is more posterior it is more towards interstitial lung disease and if it is more anterior it is because of ards fibrosis and it can be unilateral or asymmetrical in centrilobular emphysema so the algorithm for approach to a decreased attenuation in ct scan is once you find decreased attenuation look for signs of lung destruction then you look for inspiratory ct scan and a expiratory ct scan if there is no signs of destruction if on expiratory ct scan you see areas of air trapping which is widespread then it is morely be because of generalized small airway narrowing or rarely narrowing of a large airway if it is patchy with mosaic perfusion it is predominantly a small airway disease in inspiratory ct scan if it looks patchy then it has to be either a small vessel disease or a small airway disease then you have to look for accentuation on the expiratory ct scan if it is more widespread it has to be generalized small airway narrowing or generalized small vessel narrowing now if you do find some signs of lung destruction then it can be either cystic as we have discussed before or it could be a emphysema if it is a emphysema it can present as a centrilobular which is very common or it may be confluent large like an advanced centrilobular as we saw in the last ct scan or it could be diffuse or a one whole lobe has been affected large lucencies as you can see in bullous emphysema 
or it could be subcludal as in paraseptal emphysema and finally it can also surround nodules sorry finally it can also surround pulmonary fibrosis which is called paracritical emphysema so this is how you approach a decrease attenuation in lungs simply thank you for your patience and check our website for further information and more detailed description of how to go about diagnosing which emphysema